Good morning YouTube! So today I'm going to talk to you about intermittent fasting. It's relatively new to me and I'm trying it whilst bulking to reduce the amount of fat that I'm gaining. So how this video is going to go, we're going to have a quick overview of what intermittent fasting actually is without the science behind it. The, uh, then we're going to debunk the myth around breakfast through scientific proof. We're going to talk about coffee and caffeine. We're going to talk about training fasted, uh, the medical benefits of intermittent fasting and its disadvantages because it wouldn't be a fair argument otherwise. Um, I also get a lot of questions regarding my diet and my view on food so throughout this video I'm gonna have running in the background my weekly meal preps which takes me 45 minutes cost me £5.50 for 10 meals of which I eat two per day and the macros for those meals are gonna be somewhere on the screen. <laughs> okay let's get into it. Peace. Okay, so the first topic we're going to cover is what is intermittent fasting? So it's eating for 8 hours of the day and not eating for the other 16, which does include the time you spend sleeping, so it's actually not that big a deal. Um, this is generally done by most people by moving breakfast until lunchtime and then eating normally for the rest of the day. Personally, I eat from between 10 and 6, 10am, 6pm, because I don't like to go to bed on a full stomach, really. Um, it's a useful adaptation on a regular eating regime for those looking to lose weight and those who are looking to stay lean while gaining muscle. So a quick note before we get into this, the fact about weight gain and loss is still true when on intermittent fasting as it is with every other diet or lifestyle or eating regime. If you have a caloric surplus, you will gain weight. If you have a caloric deficit, you will lose it. It is that simple. So. Without further ado, let's get into the real stuff. So, we're now going to go and talk about the benefits of intermittent fasting that don't require scientific validation. So, you have a lot less to worry about in the morning, um, whether that is more time to get ready or focus on what your tasks are for the day, or like me, you could just sleep a little bit longer before you go to work. Um, it's really easy, as people tend to show greater willpower earlier on in the day, which I'm sure you can relate to. Um, and also there's no specific dietary requirements. So you can eat whatever you want on this. There is no restriction. And obviously I'd recommend eating clean food, but your choice. Um, you also increase the consumption or intake of water, which has countless number of benefits, such as clear skin, greater focus, consistent energy levels, just to name a few. Um, and you have more enjoyable meals. Your first meal of the day tastes fantastic, I can guarantee you that. After waiting 16 hours, you're not hungry, but the first th thing that you taste, tastes great. Um, and you can eat large meals rather than skimping out all the good stuff, which is so much more fun and not feeling guilty about it. Okay, let's get into the science of this. We're gonna debunk the biggest myth of all time. The oldest wives tale that all parents will tell you that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. To skip. Um, let's start by explaining to you what entering fasted state actually means. And this comes about when your blood glucose level drops below roughly 80 milligrams per deciliter, which typically happens 8 to 12 hours after you last ate. At this point, a hormone called glucagon is released and you enter a catabolic state, whereby your body is now using its fat and glycogen stores to provide energy rather than having a direct supply of glucose from your digestive tract. It's important to, it is important here sorry, to understand that glucagon is the opposing hormone to insulin, which you will have heard of from diabetics as they don't produce insulin. Uh, and this hormone uh, reduces blood glucose levels um, and stores the excess. So glucagon stops being, being produced when insulin is present. So the moment you start eating, your insulin spikes and you leave the fasted state as glucagon stops being produced. The following information I got from Duke University Lectures, um, the link to that video is in the description below. Uh, so you obtain a combined effect greater than the net sum of each individual hormone, known as synergy, when all the catabolic hormones are present together, being epinephrine, cortisol and glucagon. Uh, a catabolic hormone is a hormone that release stored nutrients for energy. 
Uh, so this synergy naturally occurs when you wake up in the morning, i.e. you wake up as a fat burning machine. Um, <laughs> which makes sense from an evolutionary standpoint if you think about it because our sympathetic nervous systems fire up when we would have been hungry and needed our wits about us as much as possible to get food in order to survive. Uh, so skipping breakfast, to summarize, enables you to burn stored fats. The moment you eat, this stops and your body starts storing nutrients as insulin is an anabolic hormone. Um, you may recognize the word anabolic because of anabolic steroids. It just means things that want to build. So now we're going to debunk the myth of burning muscle on intermittent fasting. So upon waking, your cortisol peaks, ghrelin, the hunger hormone, peaks shortly after that, and then human growth hormone, which does exactly what it says on the tin, as well as reducing the amount of muscle breakdown for energy, peaks around two hours after that, as you can see from the graph on the screen, which was taken from John Kiefer's Carbohydrate Backloading which is a fantastic book, um, and if you are into your the science behind nutrition, then I'd seriously go check it out. Um, sorry, and then this states that if you don't eat, and therefore don't cause an insulin spike in the morning, then you won't lose any substantial muscle whilst continuing to burn fat. Um, this is also the same reason why we don't waste away when we're sleeping, because our insulin drops and human growth hormone is released. So in this book, John references a study, which I'm going to show on the screen, which states that over a six week period, participants lost admittedly a greater amount of fat eating in the morning, but marginally. The overall mass lost was significant, but this is due to a large amount of muscle mass lost. So if we compare that to those who ate in the evening, they lost 0.6 kilograms or just over a pound less than those who ate in the morning over six weeks, which isn't a great deal anyway but they lost only one fifth of the muscle compared to those who ate in the morning. And so if you take into account this, the amount of weight loss, or sorry, fat loss was marginal, but the amount of muscle loss was really quite significant. So I know so many people who won't cut or try to lose body fat unless they go on intermittent fasting, purely for the saving of their own muscle. So please, from this, let go your fear that you're gonna lose muscle if you don't eat breakfast you won't. So now we're going to go on to the thermic effect of food. So there's a common misconception I've heard over and over again from so many people that having breakfast and eating regularly keeps your metabolism running quickly. Um, there's been so much research done over the years to prove that this isn't the case. Um, over a given day, or week really, your metabolism changes with the number of calories you've eaten on average. Uh, and the split of those macros, which you can check out Jeff Nippard's 10k challenge as he does a fantastic review of how much fat you gain when you overeat. Um, he states a 35% thermic effect of food for protein, 15% thermic effect of food for carbs and fats. So i.e. out of 100 calories, 35 calories if it was protein are going to be spent as heat and 15 for fats and carbs are going to be spent as heat. Um, it's not the frequency in which you ingest the food. So the research paper on the screen now is from Cambridge. Uh, the reference is in the description and it's written back in 1997. It shows a summary table of previous studies done uh, over a span of 11 years to admittedly only 54 participants, but all findings were non-conclusive one way or another um, as to whether binge eating or snacking yields greater, uh, a greater thermic effect of food. Um, you could actually make a conclusion looking at the results that one meal per day produces a higher thermic effect, but this is most likely due to the measuring window not being long enough to account for the entire thermic effect of uh, snacking to be displayed. And so we can safely conclude that skipping breakfast will not slow down your metabolism, with far more recent studies also showing this. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about caffeine and coffee. Um, John Kiefer dedicates a small chapter to caffeine in his carbohydrate backloading which references over two dozen studies and only a few short pages discussing the benefits it has specifically for carbohydrate backloading but for the purpose of this discussion i'm referencing it to prove to you that uh, ingesting caffeine increases your metabolism which is beneficial for your morning fasting period because it accentuates the fat burning um, effects experienced aside of its usual effects of waking you up and getting you to focus. I personally rarely use caffeine as it has extreme effects on me 
um, half of an espresso and I'm buzzing for three days. It's horrible. Um, but I will sometimes have a cup of decaffeinated black coffee if I'm feeling exceptionally tired or hungry because um, it still does have some caffeine in it. Please don't let decaf misguide you. It, they can't remove it completely. Um, but coffee has other stimulants present and it also is known to reduce hunger. So if you are trying intermittent fasting and you're struggling in the beginning, then I'd recommend finishing eating earlier the night before because then you will wake up in a fasted state and uh, try having a cup of black coffee with potentially heavy whipping cream in it as John recommends because this is pure fat it's not going to take you out of a fasted state and it will suppress the hunger even more. Training fasted. If you love to train in the morning which I've done many times throughout my life I would go through stints of training in the morning and training in the evening. Um, don't fear training fasted honestly. Um, from personal experience, there is little to no difference in strength throughout your sessions. You're not low in energy because you're in a fasted state. Um, and I must mention here that training hungry is very different to training fasted. Uh, if you're not in a fasted state and you are hungry, there are going to be more issues. Anyway, let's get back to the science. There are studies which show that eating carbs after a fasted training session um, results in greater anabolic response than that of a normal pre-fed session. And so basically put, you're going to make more gains. Um, the link I will put in the description below and it's also chapter three, uh, 43 of carbohydrate backboning. So let's go have a look at the medical benefits of intermittent fasting. So it wards off diabetes because you have this period each day of low insulin which cause, causes an increased sensitivity to insulin in your body. Similar to if you haven't drunk for a while and then the next time you decide to have a booze up it turns out that you're a 14 year old girl trying to handle a whole litre of vodka for the first time. Um, meaning that you're less likely to develop type 2 diabetes. Uh, the 2005 paper uh, published to the American Physiological Society on the screen shows proof of increased insulin sensitivity as the rate of glucose intake increased from 6.3 to 7.3 milligrams per kilogram per minute for their subject when coming off of a fast. There are also effects of prolonged life. It's been well documented that caloric restriction on mice increases their lifespan up to around 80% for some studies done in 1987. I can't say how valid they are. Um, it reduces their chances of getting cancer, but the effects on humans needs to be studied further, which is a conclusion of the article shown here. Um, but their findings did suggest two signs of increased longevity just over a short six month period. To make this uh, an unbiased and fair review, I'm also going to discuss the other side of it to keep you well informed that the disadvantages and downsides of intermittent fasting. It isn't the biggest secret in the world. Um, it's not some miracle regime that's going to make you lose ridiculous amounts of fat and gain ridiculous amounts of muscle because people still use steroids, so it's clearly not that great. Um, <laughs> another point, I personally have struggled to fit in uh, the amount of calories required for bulking into such a small eating window. Um, and it sometimes makes me feel quite uncomfortable with the amount of food that I'm eating. But in my defense, I'm still eating the same food that I was eating to try and make me feel full throughout the day so that I didn't overeat. Um, for example, yesterday I had a McDonald's, took up half of my calories and I went to bed really, really hungry. So you do have to find the balance somewhere. Uh, some people also just can't hack not having breakfast. Uh, so this really wouldn't be for them. Um, but just to let you know, with the way I do it, I start at 10 o'clock. And so I really don't have to wait that long before my first meal. Um, you could also eat before you start eating but you're limited to purely fats as this won't take you out of your fasted state. It is worth noting here, Rob Lipset put out a video saying you can have protein in your fasting state. Not strictly true as eating protein can cause an insulin spike which will take you out of the fasted state. So I would honestly limit it to pure fats. And lastly, the research done on morning cognitive function whilst fasted is very limited to school children and it has a variety of results spanning from swaying one way to another on IQ test scores and memory recall functionality. But it all does tend to agree the effect of skipping breakfast is bad for children who are generally malnourished. 
which is pretty obvious anyway. Uh, and most of the research done on well-nourished children, on the other hand, ends up concluding very little other than an improvement in mood and attendance. In any case, it's not really too relevant if you're struggling to focus in the morning, have a cup of coffee, kill two birds with one stone, get your metabolism increased at the same time as focusing. Um, I also have heard that caffeine has an increased uh, effect and response, and also you have an increased sensitivity to caffeine whilst fasted. I can't comment on that on that too much, as I told you I don't drink caffeine. So, and that's the end of this informative video. I'm really trying to get into the science space of uh, fitness and nutrition. So if you enjoyed it, please hit that thumbs up. Give me your feedback on how I edited it and how the video went, as well as the information provided and whether you're going to try out intermittent fasting, see if I've won you over with that or not. Um, if you want to see calisthenics, gym related, home workout and nutrition videos, please hit the subscribe button because more great stuff is coming your way. Um, thanks again for watching. Peace.